So we're going to solve quadratic formulas using, I'm sorry, going to solve quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. Here are the possibilities. Um, a quadratic is, a, is parabolic in shape, so here's one possibility. It's possible that the parabola comes down, maybe like that, and touches. This is what we're trying to figure out here, is how many times, when we're solving, how many times and where does our equation touch the x-axis? These are the solutions where it touches. It's also possible that it, maybe that it comes down here and it just kind of touches that right there and it goes back up like this. I'm sorry about the shape, but just trying to illustrate the point. In this case, it touches the x-axis one time. Uh, and then another possibility is that we have a function that comes down, I don't know, like this maybe, and doesn't touch at all. So this one touches zero times. So these are the possibilities. Now the curve, the parabola could be flipped upside down. So here it looks kind of like a wine glass, but it could look like a um, maybe an umbrella or something this way. Um, this one could also be upside down. So I'm not saying the, the which way it faces, if it's a minimum or a maximum. We'll talk about that later. All we're saying is when we're looking for solutions is how many times does it touch the x-axis and where? And this one touches no times. So the possibilities are two times. This one touches once, and this one touches never. So those are the three possibilities. So sometimes we have a function that's really easily factored, and we can solve it. Like we could have f of, f of x is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 24, and we could set that thing equal to 0. And Right, we took f of x, we set the f of x, the height is equal to zero. So we see this is zero. So we're, this is a question. The question here is, when is the height of this function equal to zero? The question is, does it hit zero twice? Does it, hit the, does it go to zero once? Or does it never go to zero? And, and this one, we can actually factor this, and it factors out really nicely, doesn't it? If we take x plus 4 times x minus 6, equals zero. And if we f if we FOIL this back, we'll get this equation, won't we? So by using this method, we could just solve this and say, when is x plus 4 equal to zero? And we'd say, well, when x is equal to negative 4. Um, and we could ask ourselves this question, when is x minus 6 equal to zero? And the answer to that is when x equals 6. So here we are. Uh, this one might be something like this. It might be something like this. This might be the point x is negative 4, 0, possibly, and this could be the point possibly 6, 0. But we know that this thing has two has two solutions. If we got confused, if you were working your way through this and somehow another you were having a really difficult time factoring it, then there's another way to do it. Or when your factors don't come out perfectly. Like what if your factor came out to be 4.1 and uh, negative 9.375? It would be very hard to factor it that way. So you can use this, and this is called the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula is what we're going to use here, quadratic formula. And the quadratic formula answers the question, when, do, when is, what is the x value when the height is 0? And the formula is the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, which looks terrible. I know it looks terrible, but it's really easy to use because keep in mind, we have, all we have to know is this. ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So the, so the a value is the number that's in front of x squared. The b value is the number that's in front of x. And the c value is that constant value attached to it. And then we just fit the, we just fill in the blanks. So on this equation, we look, the a value is 1x squared, isn't it? So a equals 1. b equals negative 2, doesn't it? Right? And c equals negative 24. c, oops, sorry. c equals negative 24. And from there, we can just fill in the blanks here, and it would look like this, right? We're going to take this. We want x is equal to, well, b is... Right, the value of b, sorry, the value of b is negative 2, so we want the opposite of that, so that's 2, isn't it? It says plus or minus, square root. b is 6, so 6 squared is 36, isn't it? Except for b is not 6, b is, b is negative 2, 
So negative 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 4ac. A was 1. C is 22. Uh, sorry. Neg wow. Negative 24. My math should be a little bit better than this, shouldn't it? Sorry. Over 2a. And 2a is 2 times 1 is 2. So we just do this math in here. And if we do this math in here, we get 4. Look, this is a negative, right? You got to think about this. This is a negative. So negative 4 times 1 is 4. Then a negative times a negative is a positive. And 4 times 24 is 96. So we have 2 plus or minus 4 plus 96. I'm just doing that math in there. I'm just simplifying here. Right? And then we look, we have 4 plus 96 is 100. So x equals 2 plus or minus the square root of 100 over 2. And what's the square root of 100? The square root of 100 is 10. So we can simplify that. That's just 10, isn't it? And now we're going to, now this is the part people kind of mess up on this. It says plus or minus. Kind of means we have two questions here, so let's do let's do the plus part first. We'll do x equals two. Check me out here. Plus, whoops, plus ten, right? Plus ten over two is two plus ten is twelve. Twelve divided by two is six. X equals six. Well, that's the answer we expected, isn't it? From the very very top of the program here today, and then we do it the other way. So that's one of our answers, and the other answer is x is equal to 2, right? It says minus, so minus 10 over 2. 2 minus 10 is negative 8, and negative 8 over 2, x equals negative 4. Really easy to do. So if you're sitting there going, this is not easy at all to do. Uh, let me just be honest with you. We just haven't practiced it enough, and you, you have to memorize this. Once you have this memorized, this thing will become a cakewalk. So start by memorizing it, and then the other thing that's going to be really important is to know how to find the A, B, and C values of the equation. All right? You're doing great. Hang in there.